was. Is it TV? Oh, is it yeah. TV <laughs> indeed? Okay. He's going to pay you the credits. <laughs> he is, he is. Um, yeah. So that's coming up after three. No, welcome back, Adam. It's good to have you back. Um, now, a brand new dance production is uh, currently at the West Midlands next week. And it's been on a UK-wide tour. So mm. it's actually on its last leg. And what that always means what is... is uh, dance tour. Yes, on last, last leg. leg. Of, yes. Right, what happened like to the, the leg during the course? They have exactly. two in the beginning. <laughs> what, else, what else was going to say? What's great about this is because by now yeah. the performance is completely bedded in, okay? Yes. But also alongside that, we know what to expect. This production has had rave reviews, right, from um, how when it's been in London across the country and now it's going to be here at Birmingham Hippodrome on Tuesday evening. It's entitled Not Today's Yesterday and it's going to be performed at the Patrick Centre in the Hippodrome. And what's different about this is it's a solo performance and the lady who has been wowing the audiences across the country is Sita Patel. Sita, it's a pleasure to have you in the show. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Um, So let's find out about this particular production because the reviews have been fantastic. It's a very topical and brand new dance production isn't it Weird. yeah that's right it's it's about whitewashing history so it's super apt for some of the things especially in the media at the moment so when you talk about whitewashing history do you mean the history for example that we learn in the books now and, and in the history books that we have in schools now which doesn't necessarily reflect upon you know even if we were to look at the british empire and what is and what is not taught in school is that what you're focusing with this production yes i mean that's definitely a part of it we've taken a more global look at how what histories are whitewashed across the world. Right. Um, obviously, I, I and we experience it here because the empire isn't taught in any kind of in fullness in our schools. I've yeah. been through the entire schooling system in this country, born and raised here. Mm. And it's only when you're an adult ad, adult that you sort of seek it and then exactly. you realise how much depth there is for you to learn and actually what an impact that history has on our psyche. Yeah. And a it's population. a part of British history, isn't it? Yeah, it's not absolutely. Indian history, it's British history. And uh, absolutely. How, how do you bring a complex uh, conversation like whitewashing history and bringing that element to dance? That's a question I've been asked a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. And <laughs> if I'm honest, at the start, it, was, it, it wasn't something I was sure that, this week, okay. that we could do this. But I've been inspired. I've been in a company called Deviate Physical Theatre and I was really inspired by mm. how sort of polemic work is, is out there and has been interpreted through dance. Right. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to do was see how we could make it kind of seductive and visceral and also very very visual and then open the conversation to a more intellectual sort of uh, debriefing afterwards and so the work is really accessible in that sense because we're bringing people into a story we've created a narrative and a story rather than talking about whitewashing we are actually made a we've made a show that is whitewashed I like that so now when you when you bring this uh, idea to the composer that you worked with uh, the choreographer the choreographer sorry that you worked with uh was it straight away, oh, I love this, let's do this? Or was it, let me go away and think about this? Um, so Lena Limassani, who's in Australia, and I, we met both of us as dancers in a devised project up in Scotland, I think about 10 years ago. Right. And I loved the way she was creating movement for us, the story we were presenting. And I'd always thought to myself, I'd love to work with her again in another capacity. And then eventually I, some an opportunity arose and I thought, let me see if Lena's interested. Right. And so I approached her and she immediately was up for trying, you know, going into a studio and trying some ideas you know, no pressure in the outcomes at that point. This was like two years ago. Yeah. And we we kind of realized that there was something there. And then we just built on it and we got support for it. Her being an Australian, was it easier for her to get a head around what you're trying to do with their history, with their natives, uh, the Aboriginal? Uh, it's definite. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's so raw there. Exactly. It's, um, like it's right in your face there. It really is. And it's very recent compared to, you know, our history sort yeah. of with the empire and things. And so... I, I don't think Lena necessarily kind of hooked in with that, but she right. liked the idea of telling the story and she's more used to doing ensemble works. And so yes. this was a challenge for her anyway, but she's really great at telling stories. And since and when we landed on the idea of a fairy tale, which has these dark undertones, I think it was really in her 
kind of in her exciting zone. I, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. most of these, uh, you know, fairy tales are quite dark, aren't they, Shane? Yeah, the brother Grimm. <laughs> very, very much. Yeah, point. very much quite grim. <laughs> very good point. Um, <laughs> now, stay with us. We're going to continue having a chat um, with Sita and find out a little bit more about what you get to see. It's going to be, by the way, if you're thinking, I'd love to see this performance. It's not today's yesterday. And it will be performed at Patrick Centre in the Hippodrome on Tuesday evening. So I'd suggest go to the website and you can book tickets there, birminghamhippodrome.com. Now, very good afternoon, Sunny and Shay. We're here with you till four o'clock today. We're having a great chat, I have to say. Uh, we've danced at performer Sita Patel. Now, she is uh, a UK award-winning Bharatanatyam artist, and she has uh, worked alongside Australian choreographer Lena Limassani for her latest show, which is titled "Not Today's Yesterday," and uh, this is going to be on next Tuesday, twenty-third of October, at Patrick Centre in Birmingham Hippodrome. Now, what? What I find really interesting, Sita, you were talking about the whole concept of this production is about whitewashing history, not just British history, but across you know the world. And um, in uh, your trailer alongside the information on a Hippodrome website, you've used a quote by George Orwell, and it says, who controls the past controls the future, who controls the present controls the past. And um, did you use that as th- this kind of top line from George Orwell uh, as an inspiration for the, the dance piece in terms of what we get to visually see with the dance? Um, I don't know if it describes what you visually see, but mm. right from the start, it resonated and it sort of encompassed the whole idea of the mm. work. This idea of whitewashing as a tool for power, mm-hmm. whitewashing our histories as a tool for power and manipulation of, of people. So, yeah, I don't think I could say it in a more concise way. Yeah. Yes. It totally makes sense. And how have audiences reacted so far? Because we did mention earlier on, this is the final. So if we want to see this, we've got to come on this Tuesday. Because it. yeah. it's been a UK-wide tour. It's been really well received as well. So how have people responded to the piece? It's been really great because um, we've had some really interesting post-show speakers which who aren't in the dance world. We've managed to get in a wider sort of uh, conversation about it. And it's it's been super, super interesting because I feel the vision visuals and the narrative that we've created allow people to go straight to the heart of the politics of the work right so sometimes i think dance can be a bit alienating or because it's sort of a a strange medium for people it's not kind of in our lives all the time for for the majority of the world yeah Yeah. that actually you know it people think oh will i get it i've had i've heard a lot of that i've been i was worried if i wouldn't get it but i totally did and and the kind of discussion they go in goes beyond just what they've seen mm-hmm. and it it goes into how they feel through what they've seen and what yeah. the politics of are through through that so it, it's really nice for me as an artist not necessarily to be asked about you know how long do you practice when did you start <laughs> dance but really the heart of the work yeah. and so that's been a really exciting and so many people have said oh I wish we'd known uh, what it would be like we would have told loads more people so I think <laughs> there's a longer life in it yet because it, it's still in that stage where people had no idea it was it's a very bold work and I think that's kind of really kind of shaken things up a bit. So I guess I have to ask you, how long did it take you to rehearse for this? uh, Because it is something that you said, it's complex and And it's it's involving. And, and, uh, you know, it's one person on stage. So the development actually started two years ago. So we've been in and out of the studio for the past two years. We presented it at the Adelaide Fringe earlier this year and we won Best Dance and the Peace Foundation Award. Thank you. Um, So that was really exciting because that's where Lena's based and so it was her home turf. And then to bring it to the UK and have have it showing here and every time we go into the studio Mm. um we we just refine it that tiny bit based on what resources we have and so it's been really exciting i'm I'm still not bored of performing i'm still not kind of tired of finding the exciting moments in it and things and yeah is it all dance and how do you get the music to uh correspond with what's happening on stage so lena has designed this exquisite backdrop of a soundscape so there's some music and, and she hasn't created the music per se but she's found the music and created this score mm-hmm. um, and it's really compelling it's almost like it it's like something in the back of your mind that's emotionally mm. driving you through right so it's not kind of in your face in that sense but it, it's like a documentary when you hear that when you don't even notice the soundtrack the but you like, yeah. feel something yes. because it's driving the story yeah and so she she's created that sound score which Again, the, the next layer is that we have a text-based script. Right. Um, sort of, it's obviously all scripts are text-based, but you know, yeah. it's that sense of um, having the words 
in the space with us right to communicate the idea with the audience so, so that makes it a lot easier for someone who hasn't seen a pure dance with the, all these elements put together hence yeah. why people are so like oh this is what dance now i can get into this mm, sort of thing it's yeah. a good introduction into dance i guess it's a really good introduction into dance and also it's nice because it's such a layered work yes it works on a very basic level of seeing something super interesting and hearing something it's super interesting but then the deeper you go into it if you so wish uh there are lots of layers in terms of the politics in yeah. terms of you know in terms of lots yeah with that then who are you going to be having post speaker for this tuesday's performance are, are there going to be any is there going to be anyone joining you yes so it's been a really big part of the tour and i'm super excited to invite dr kahinde andrews and abira kamran um because they are experts in their field and they're doing a lot of work for sort of you know decolonizing spaces yeah. for writing and theater and arts and and various other things and i mean dr andrews has just written a book about black radicalism and he he's been very prolific in sort of talking about this and shifting perceptions of certain kind of uh, negative perceptions that we have of black radicalism and what yeah. that means historically so i am super excited that he's going to be there and abira as well who's you know been a really exciting part of the birmingham scene in terms of curating a sort of exhibition that decolonizes those spaces which are often you know that dominated we've just by white him, people we've just seen him on good morning britain as well haven't we yeah. with yes morgan so he's been in the news quite extensively this week so talking about winston churchill so i suspect um there'll be people wanting to talk to him on tuesday as well so it's really comments. exciting we're working in collaboration with beat freaks collective um and so we've created a, there'll be a small sort of introduction to the speakers but then we're going to we're split off and there's, there's going to be a sort of a think tank dis- discussion like with that. the speakers and then all the information will be uploaded onto onto the internet where it can be shared Come fantastic on. listen Sita it's been such a pleasure having you here and obviously um, what's great about Tuesday night's performance is it's going to be one that everyone can get involved with after they've seen it which I think will be great thank you for joining us thank today. you so much for having me um, now if you want further details I would suggest go to the website the name of the show is not today's yesterday go to birminghamhippodrome.com and you can find out performance times tickets as well and uh, there is no internet of what it says on the website so just be aware of that um, birminghamhippodrome.com Birmingham.